All eyes will be on Happy Valley this Saturday night, but don't overlook what's happening in Salt Lake City. Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, bringing you some of the best college football news, predictions, and analysis. Go follow us on Twitter at Gridiron Expert, and of course, check out our official website, thegridironexpert.com, for more college football news and analysis. The links for all those things are in the description below, so make sure you don't miss out on any of it. Well, like we mentioned, the biggest game of Week 8 is number 16 Michigan traveling to number 7 Penn State. That was our game of the week that we posted back on Wednesday, and that is of course where college game day is going on Saturday morning. But one of the more underrated matchups in all of college football this week, a matchup that I don't think is getting enough attention, is number 17 Arizona State traveling to number 13 Utah in Salt Lake City a game that could potentially determine who wins the Pac-12 South. So, of course, like we've done all season long with these Game of the Week analysis, we're going to break down each team and, of course, break down the keys for each team and see who comes away with a victory on Saturday night. Now, I do want to address a little bit of history in this game because what happened back in 2018 could play a little bit of a role and play a little bit of a factor in the matchup now in 2019. As we all know, Arizona State defeated Utah last year 38-20 way out in the desert. A very signature win for Herm Edwards and the Sun Devils squad. But in that game, Utah not only lost their star quarterback in Tyler Huntley, they also lost their running back in Zach Moss. Both of those players, of course, are back extremely healthy and are leading one of the more balanced offenses in the entire nation. But you can expect a little bit of emotion coming out of both Huntley and Moss in this game, facing off against the team that they got injured against last year and ended their season last season. So a lot of emotions riding high in this game for those two players and a lot of emotion for the Utah program period as they've had back-to-back -back lopsided losses to the Sun Devils 38-20 in 2018, as we mentioned, and 30-10 back in 2017. The reason this is such a big game, and I'm very surprised not enough people are talking about it, is of course that this game will determine major separation in the Pac-12 South Division. Now, back in the preseason, many of us, including myself, had Utah as a sure lock for the Pac-12 South. We said they were the best team across the board, offensively, defensively, coaching-wise. Utah should run away with the South Division. But right now, we have a four-way tie for first place with USC, Arizona State, Utah, and Arizona all having a 2-1 and one conference record. So right now, Utah still in the midst of three other teams and who's going to win that division. Luckily, or maybe unluckily for some of these teams, all of those teams play each other this week. Arizona State plays Utah, USC plays Arizona. So you will finally get some separation. By the end of Saturday night, there will only be two teams that are tied for first place in the Pac-12 South. You might get a little separation from these two Pac-12 matchups. So a huge, huge game determining who can win this division uh, in 2019. So we're going to start talking about the offenses here. I want to talk, kind of briefly touch on that. We mentioned earlier how balanced Utah's offense is how balanced they are, how I believe they are one of the most balanced offenses in the entire nation. And a job well done from Tyler Huntley and Zach Moss for from bouncing back so well from their season-ending injuries just last, just last year. They're averaging 238.5 passing yards per game and 228.8 rushing yards per game. Combined, the offense is averaging 34.8 points per game. That's a huge difference from an Arizona State squad that's only averaging 25.3 points per game. Zach Moss, you know, back in the preseason, if you go watch our video, we expected this to be a, a very run-heavy game between Eno Benjamin at Arizona State and Zach Moss with Utah. And right now, you know, back then I would have said that Eno, after watching what he did in 2018, would have maybe had the upper hand in this game against Utah. And that's certainly not the case. Zach Moss has outplayed Eno Benjamin, not that's a competition, but when you're comparing them, has outplayed him majorly. Moss is averaging 7.6 yards per carry this season, while Eno Benjamin is only rushing for 4.2 yards per carry. Defenses have figured out how to bottle up Eno Benjamin, but they just can't seem to figure out how to bottle up Zach Moss, arguably one of the best and most veteran running backs in the entire nation. 
Tyler Huntley for Utah is completing 76% of his passes. He's only thrown 32 incompletions all season long. Let's keep that in mind. Keep in mind how impressive that is. And that also just comes to show that, you know, he's only comp completed or thrown for a little over 130 pass attempts. That comes to show how balanced his Utah offense is. Because not only can Utah sling it with Huntley, Huntley is a dual threat quarterback, and then you've got a very capable running back in Zach Moss. It's extremely difficult for any team to shut down this Utah offense due to the amount of talent they have across the board. For Arizona State, they are not as balanced. Once again, back in the preseason, you would have expected them to rely heavily on Eno Benjamin, arguably one of the better running backs in the entire Pac-12. But this year, they have really relied on true freshman quarterback Jaden Daniels, who has really, really surprised me. It's unbelievable not only the job that Herm Edwards has done just during his short stint with the Sun Devils, but the job that he has done transforming this offense already with Jaden Daniels, a true freshman, already throwing for over 1,600 yards, eight touchdowns, just one interception, and has also added 198 rushing yards and two touchdowns on the ground. One of those rushing touchdowns was the game winner against Washington State last week. So Jaden Daniels has proven that he is capable as a true freshman of winning in the Pac-12, winning big games, leading game-winning drives. He's clearly not afraid of anything, and he does a very good job of taking care of the football. And that is going to be key in this matchup, going up against one of the better defenses, not just in the Pac-12, but in the entire nation with Utah. Now, when you look at both of these schools, there are two questions you have to ask for both teams on the defensive side of the ball. The first, we'll start with Arizona State. Can Arizona State run versus Utah? Can the Sun Devils get some ground game going against this Utes defense that is allowing just 52.8 rushing yards per game? With the way Eno Benjamin's been playing so far, compare his 2018 stats through about six or seven games to now through six or seven games in 2019, the stats are drastically different. He's just not putting up the great amount of numbers that he was doing last year. So no, the answer is no. Arizona State cannot run the game, run against Utah's defense. 52.8 rushing yards allowed per game. Arizona State averages 134.3 rushing yards per game. So you almost triple the amount of differences that you have there. Now, I just don't think Eno Benjamin and this Arizona State offense have what, it, have what it takes to run the ball effectively and consistently against a Utah front seven that's one of the best in the entire country. Now, the same can be said for Utah, though. We have another question for them. Can Utah's offense wear down Arizona State's defense? We mentioned how balanced Utah's offense is, how, how strong they are on both sides of the ball, running and throwing. Arizona State, though, only allows 262.8 passing yards per game and 91.7 rushing yards per game. So like Utah, Arizona State's rushing defense is extremely, extremely stout. Extremely, extremely difficult to go up against. And once again, I don't think we were going to expect either of those, maybe more so for Utah, but not Arizona State, when we looked at this game back in the summer. We expected Zach Moss and Eno Benjamin to carry these teams in this game, carry one of their teams to victory. Now it might be Tyler Huntley or Jaden Daniels that leads their team to victory in this game. These two teams might have to rely more on the passing game than they will on the run game uh, in Salt Lake City. Now, one thing that should be noted is that for Utah's one loss, which of course came to uh, USC, and Arizona State's one loss, which came surprisingly by three points to Colorado, they both got annihilated by the pass. And that just kind of proves our point once again that both of these two teams are going to have to rely more on their passing game and rely more on their passing defense if they want to win this game because USC threw all over Utah in their early season loss back in September, and that was to be expected from a Graham Harrell-led air raid offense. We knew it was coming. Utah just was unable to stop it. Colorado, led by Stephen Montez, looked great at first with Mel Tucker. That's kind of petered off since then, but still, with LaVisca Chenault and that passing offense, it's very tough for many teams to shut down the Buffalo's passing attack. Both teams got annihilated through the air, so the passing defenses have to step up and their quarterbacks have to step up if Utah or Arizona State wants to walk out with a crucial Pac-12 win. So we're going to break down the keys for these games, and we've kind of mentioned a couple of them already, highlighting the both sides of the ball, but we'll start with Arizona State. Coming on the road to Salt Lake is a very difficult thing to do. Winning in Salt Lake is a very difficult thing to do. Not many teams are able to do that. 
Arizona State, if they want to win this game, they have to get their run game going. And we kind of mentioned that earlier. Can Arizona State run versus Utah? We don't think they can. Not with the way Utah's defense has been playing. But if they want to have any chance, they must be able to run the football and they must be able to run it effectively and consistently. Two, three-yard gains every now and then is not going to do it for Eno Benjamin. Better yet, run it a little bit, set up the play action, and get Eno Benjamin involved in the passing game. That could be something that could maybe wear down this Utah defense and throw them for a little bit of a loop. So get the run game going and utilize Daniels' mobility. Utilize Dan- uh, Jaden Daniels' mobility at quarterback. Kind of all stays, uh, stays together when you're talking about the run game, but one of them is you're handing it off to your bruising running back, and the other one is you're taking your true freshman quarterback and taking off. So design some design QB runs, some bootlegs, something to get Jaden Daniels out in the open and running the football because that's something that I don't know if Utah is going to be fully prepared for. They played Zach Wilson in the season opener, but outside of that, that's probably the toughest dual-threat quarterback they have faced this season. Jaden Daniels could give the youth a bit of a test if they're able to run the ball with him. And then finally, they have to force turnovers. Utah doesn't give the ball away very often, and they eat up that time of possession with the very balanced offense that we mentioned. They've got to force turnovers because I can tell you one thing. Arizona State is going to be unable to take away both sides of the running game and the passing game for Utah. If you take away the pass, they're going to beat you up on the run. If you take away the run, they're going to beat you up on the pass. Not many teams can be said to do that. Most teams have a strong suit that if you take it away, they might struggle on the other side. Utah is not that team. So Arizona State's going to have a very tough day defensively, but if they want to do that, they've got to be able to get consistent and balanced on offense and step it up with the passing defense uh, defensively. Now for Utah, very plain and simple for the Utes, very quick and simple. They've already got home field advantage, and you know how I feel about that. You know how how big a deal I think home field advantage is, and, and it really is. It plays a huge role. That crowd, that environment plays a huge role when you're going up against the opposing team. But... For Utah, they've got to shut down Eno Benjamin. Keep him contained across the board. Don't let him run. Don't let him become a force in the passing game. Just make him a non-factor in this game against the Sun Devils. And finally, force Arizona State to win it through the air. We mentioned that for Arizona State, they're gonna they're kind of in a crapshoot because if you take one away, Utah will thrive. If they take away the passing game, or if they take away the running game for Arizona State and force Jaden Daniels, a true freshman quarterback who's going up against what I will say is his toughest test yet, yes, I know they beat Michigan State. I know they beat Cal. I know they beat Washington State. But the toughest environment and toughest test yet, they force him to throw. I expect a couple errors out of Daniels, more than one interception that he's thrown all season long, and Utah's defense can come away with some takeaways and maybe get up enough that for the defensive slugfest they may be having, those turnovers could be a huge, huge difference maker. And the last thing I want to add regarding that for Utah is after they got torched, after they got torched by USC in that passing attack, Kyle Whittingham turned around his defense against the pass. Since then, when they faced off against Washington State and that air raid offense that Mike Leach likes to run, they allowed 252 passing yards. After that, against Oregon State, They only allowed 169 passing yards. The defense for Utah turned a corner after the loss they were dealt against USC. The passing game is stepping up. I don't think Eno has enough uh, to go up against this stout running defense. It's only allowing over 50 per game. And judging by the way that Utah's pass defense has played in their previous games, I don't think Arizona State has much success through the air either. Regardless, though, Herm Edwards continues to surprise me. Y'all know he's one of my favorite hires since last year. He was one of the best coaches, uh, coaching hires that I've seen in a very, very long time. I love watching his passion, his intensity on the sideline, and love watching what he's doing with his Arizona State program. He continues to surprise me every single year, and I expect him to surprise me once again in Salt Lake City by keeping this game close. But he's not going to surprise me enough by coming away with a win. Utah defeats Arizona State at home on Saturday night and finally creates some separation among the rest in the Pac-12 South. Of course, a huge date with Washington coming up that could very well determine if it stays that way for a while. So a huge game Saturday night. Don't overlook Salt Lake City. I know we've got the Happy Valley one coming your way with Michigan and Penn State, but a huge Pac-12 showdown on Saturday night that you do not want to miss. 
So guys, thank you for watching us here on YouTube. Uh, go check us out on Twitter at Gridiron Expert. Check out our official website, thegridironexpert.com. Sign up for the weekly newsletter. Sign up for the expert picks. And as always, thank you for watching. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on the Gridiron Expert. Oh,